So hi everyone, this is Rachel Pradhan with the Atibo Group and thank you so much for joining us for our webinar on what's the difference between Exact Macola 10 and Progression ES. Uh, Exact Macola 10 has gotten a lot of praise and attention since it was released, uh, more than Macola has received since 1999 actually. Um, for those of you still on Progression and ES, uh, you might be wondering what is all the fuss about. Uh, you certainly might be asking the questions, is this even worth all the trouble and expense of upgrading to Exact Macola 10? I already know my system. Um, we get it. So instead of just another demo of Exact Macola 10, we thought we'd go through the major differences as well as some of the top reasons clients have decided to upgrade. I know I would appreciate that information if I was in your shoes. So let's get started. Uh, Exact Macola 10 first came out in July of 2014, and it was touted as this really new system with all kinds of new functionality. And it's true that it does look and feel more modern, and the technology behind the system is a huge improvement. But as far as you, the user, are concerned, the system will still feel familiar, but much easier to use. The Exact Macola 10 software system is still a huge core ERP system that, has, that you have to come to expect from Exact Macola with strengths in manufacturing, distribution, and accounting. And just glancing at this graphic provided by Exact, um, it shows you some of the integrations and improvements, such as quality management, uh, project management, HR, CRM, and the ability to work anywhere with personalized workspace. And we'll get more into that in a second with side-by-side -side comparison, but first I want to introduce you to our speaker today. Uh, Len Rio, he's our president and general manager of the Ativa Group, which was founded in 1992. And before that, he had a significant career in cost accounting and financial management with several manufacturing and distribution companies. And during that period, he found his passion in developing and improving business processes and the information systems that support them. And as one of the foremost experts in Exact Macola software, among other ERP systems. Rio has built Ativo into a national operation with clients spanning the entire United States. So, Len, what are we going to be talking about today? Hello, everyone, and thank you, Rachel, for that introduction. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today, we'll be covering the differences in Macola ES and progression compared to Macola 10 in regards to a couple of specific things. Um, the focus is on user experience, technology and the architecture, and functionality. Functionality is, is, is huge. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. We spend a lot of time on that. We'll also review some frequently asked questions about the top 10 reasons some companies have already decided to upgrade. Um, and we want you to have this as a, as a dialogue and answer any questions that come up during this presentation. Uh, currently, everyone is, um, is muted, um, but there is a chat feature that you can use with, with WebEx, and uh, it would be, it'd be great if you could just put the questions into the, the chat box, and we'll handle those at, at the end. And then we'll also have some time, and we'll just you know, um, unmute everyone so we can have um, an open dialogue. So let's just let's jump right into the comparisons in the user experience. The old versions of Macola had some very dated screens, which had tired, uh, a tired graphical interface, and and definitely was not mobile friendly. But mobile friendly didn't matter in 1997 because smartphones smartphones weren't even invented yet. And that's what what you're seeing on the left side there is Macola version six DOS. There's probably a few of you out there remember, that remember those screens. And you'll also see the, the sticky note in the bottom left. I can't really read it, but it, it's probably reminding someone to follow up with a prospect or something like that. Um, I'm sure there's a few of you on this call that remembers those. 
I actually began my career with Macola version 5 uh, back in the early 90s. It was pretty rock solid stuff, and it was rocket science. But gosh, what a long way we've come. This is one example of the Macola 10 interface. As you can see, it's very intuitive and, and probably much easier to use uh, just looking at it with fresh graphics and browser-based screens. Um, one of the places that Exact is continuing to pour a lot of investment dollars into is the user interface to ensure that it's the most natural experience and the most efficient design to improve the user experience. That job is never going to be done, but they've come a long, long way. Now, to be completely accurate about where we are with Exact Macola 10, most widely used screens are now browser-based. I'm referring to things like um, purchase order entry or order entry, voucher entry, uh, screens like that, a lot of the maintenance screens. There are still some that are in client server mode, but the plan is to replace all screens with, a, with browser technology within the next 12 months or so. Keep in mind that Exact is on a, 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 a pace of a new release to Macola 10 every six months. Now, being browser-based means that you can work where you want to, like from home, like you need to do that some more, or in a branch office or a hotel room while traveling. The system is now mobile-friendly, which means it will work on any device, such as an iPad, smartphone, or tablet, um, or even a Macintosh natively, um, rather than just on a PC. Now, the real um, mojo with the user interface is what we refer to as workspaces. Workspaces are the home page, if you will, or your home page of Exact Macola 10. So, Exact Macola 10 has a workspace that's based on your specific role. Maybe you're the CEO, or maybe you're the controller, maybe you're the purchasing person, or, or maybe you, you do accounts payable. So your workspace will look different from the salesperson or from the person who does inventory control. Then that workspace can be personalized based on what information you need and how you work, because most of the users of mid-range software like Macola are relatively smaller companies, and we wear many hats. So even though you're the, the accounts payable person, you might also be doing human resources. Who knows? It just happens that way. So your workspace um, may have to have those kind, that kind of access, or you may have to have access to multiple workspaces. But, you know, the, the point is that Everything that you need will be in one place, which will save you hours of time. That way, instead of waiting for pages to load, you can work right within the screen that you're on and with real-time data. Plus, look at the graphics. With easy-to-understand graphics, it's easy to understand work, finish work, make decisions, save time, and make money. We're going to look more closely at those graphics a little bit later. Uh, look at this poor guy. Chained to his desktop computer. The technology that Progression and Yes were built on simply weren't compatible to, to mobile users. Today's business more and more requires mobility. It's becoming less and less of an option. Think about where we were just five short years ago, where we are now. Where will we be in two to three to five years? Because the pace is accelerating in terms of being mobile and having to have answers or be able to react to things. So because Macola 10 is a browser-based system, it allows you to work where you want. So a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone, you can work anywhere that is Wi-Fi, essentially, allowing you to easily check inventory, uh, take orders at trade shows, um, update a customer card while in a sales meeting, or even run a real-time report while on vacation, like you wanted to do that, I'm sure. But it's all about real-time business without waiting until you get back into the office. And this is a must requirement to 
keep competitive in today's marketplace where your customers are expecting this. It's just become expected. Now, as it relates to real-time financial information, progression users are, well, pretty much a lot. Unless someone's budget all day long, there is no such thing as anything financial in real time. Even inventory might be behind to a certain aspect. But Macola ES was a significant improvement, as you, those of you who know Macola ES, but you're still tied to the client server personal computer experience to get information in near real time. Regardless, whether it's progression, whether it's Macola ES, there's a lot of drill down into the data or intensive reporting with little to no graphical support in either progression or Macola ES. But reporting in Exact Macola 10 allows for real-time visibility and reporting with workspace dashboards. Now, dashboards are role-specific. Again, you're seeing on the slide, this is a someone in accounts receivable with graphics specific to the accounts receivable role. The point is that the users need to have eyes on the data that they should be watching at regular intervals or warnings for out-of-tolerance conditions. And this type of data needs to be real-time so that someone can act on the information as soon as possible to leverage opportunities or avoid disasters. So the, the graphics in the reporting are also actionable, meaning menu items can be attached to them to further understand the condition or take appropriate action immediately. I'll show you some of that when we get to the, the demo at the end about how we can just click on a graph and, and go to someplace else. This was a big, big deal. When Macola, when Exact decided to make Macola an all-in-one kind of ap application, it really changed the game. The system now includes everything. Basically, from general ledger to project management, you know, you don't have to wait until you can afford that other module. You simply turn it on when your team is ready, and you can use it right out of the box. So remember all those great things that people like us, you know, and, or your consultants were always telling you? Now you can actually do those things because the applications are already licensed. That means you can have automated events with event manager, like when an order is entered, the right people are notified, or perhaps an acknowledgement is automatically emailed to the buyer and to the salesperson on the account, all without data entry. Or perhaps you have a customer that hasn't placed an order in a while. You can create an event that will automatically add a workflow task for the sales team to touch base with that dormant client and generate more business. Documents can be safely stored and easily accessible. Customer cards and their history with your company are all in one place quality management, project management, all within one system. This fully licensed all-in-one system, as I said, is a real game changer for manufacturers and distributors. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a consulting um, engagement and we recognized ourselves and the customer recognized that we needed another application, lot control, shop floor, standard cost, document manager, you name it, and it wasn't licensed, and it was going to be a big deal to get it licensed and go through that whole approval process, and you know what? The projects rarely went anywhere. That's all gone. Now, just to compare and contrast where the investment is happening from exact, the developer's perspective, if you're expecting new features, or changes for exact Macola progression in ES, you'll be waiting for a long time. Now, there is no planned sunset dates for these applications. So don't worry about having to run out because the software is not going to be supported. I'm not saying that. Uh, exact is committed um, to continue to provide bug fixes and compatibility updates, like when Windows 11 or 12 or whatever comes out. Um, but all new development investment is being focused only on Macola 10. So 
you know, there's new applications that are being rolled out, service management, all kinds of things. Those will not be included in either progression or ES. So during the exact Evolve conference, uh, which was just this past April, the product roadmap for future development for Exact Macola for the next 18 months was presented. We covered most of the plan during our last webinar, um, which by the way, it is available for viewing on our website. Um, and we have it outlined also in, in a three part uh, blog series. But some of the top updates we saw coming to Macola 10 in the plan were continued updates to the mobility and browser-based technology. They recognize that the client-server uh, experience is, is dying or dead. Um, updates to usability, a real focus. So the user interface and user experience is being stressed by focusing on making it a more intuitive system. The more intuitive, the easier to use, the easier to train people, the more efficient everyone becomes. Powerful business intelligence and analytics tools are being added with a new relationship with a company called Click. Click is an online uh, analytical tool that works with a lot of systems like Macola that uh, really allows some quick and easy um, analysis to be done by people that don't have to have a, a degree in rocket science. There were also some important features uh, um, for compliance needs uh, that are, are going to be incorporated. Um, many of you might be subject to the IFRS, the International Financial Reporting Standards uh, compliance requirements. Um, quality management um, applications are being developed to be totally integrated with, with the application. So a lot of work is being done in that area. Now, in regards to the technology, um, I, I really like to, you know, keep this simple uh, because I can go on and bore you with a lot of alphabet soup about what's, what's happening. Um, so we're going to skip over all those details for now. But Rachel has a white paper with all the technology changes comparing progression in a yes to exact Macola 10. For any of you that are interested, um, just drop us a, a note. We'll be glad to send that along. So suffice to say that when you look under the hood now, the technology looks a lot more like a Tesla than your grandfather's Buick. It really has changed dramatically. So they're so significant um, that I don't even understand half of it because it's kind of ahead of my knowledge curve. Um, I know that it required a huge investment by Exact, but it's the only way that they'll be able to enable all this great stuff like mobility and so on that we're talking about. But right now, the developers are in a really good place. A lot of that's behind them. They're in a position to make some real progress and to do it a lot faster than before. Let's move on to functionality. So I love this graphic because uh, it reminds me a lot about the way um, a lot of Macola progression systems are actually used out there. Um, we're going to show you a, a quick demo of some of what we're talking about, but it'll be very brief. Um, but we will have a full demo available through our website if you want to see everything in, in details. But um, so in progression, the accounting was very basic and, and sometimes very difficult to use. It truly was being used or is continuing to be used like a glorified typewriter essentially to record history. The accounting applications have been dramatically improved, especially comparing progression to exact Macola 10. For example, posting subledgers. Subledgers were actually eliminated with Macola ES, for those of you using Macola ES, but now you can easily view financial data in real time from a workspace dashboard, which you can't possibly do with Macola progression because we haven't posted the subledgers. Let's start there. Now, real-time reporting is where Macola 10 really steps up to the plate. 
Since there's no batches to post, no waiting, all real-time reporting is right on your dashboard. You can click on a graph if you want and drill into the details. Or maybe it's something that is, you can include on that graph the ability to send a request off to a colleague about what something might mean or why it's there or, or something of that nature. Or maybe it's um, a, a, a late purchase order and you need to drill into the customer account card and make a phone call to the, 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 the supplier, rather, and find out, hey, where's my stuff? So you can do it right from the graph itself. But, you know, with Macola progression and Macola ES, no matter how many modules you had with your progression or ES system, it always seemed like you needed something else that you don't have. I've kind of brought this up before, but I want to underscore this because it's come up a number of times from folks who have already converted to Macola 10. Let's say you wanted to automate a workflow or, or have customer relationship management or integrated document management, a shop floor, or quality management. Well, you had to pay for it, and it was never cheap. Everything, everything, everything was a la carte. And it drove us consultants crazy because we knew where we needed to go with our clients, but, uh, you know, we got to sell you another this or that. And basically we couldn't do it, and it was another disappointment. So one of the tools for EM10 is that you have all of the tools that you need for a successful automated business management system. So instead of a list of add-on products you have to buy in order to create the proper system, proper system, you have it all in one. That includes integrated document management, workflow, project management, CRM, human resources. That means that process workflows can be more automated with a lot less manual data entry. And you can now deploy lot of control in the system. I've got plenty of clients who have a parallel inventory system so they can keep lot control. It's crazy. However, it's all there now. Standard costing, payroll, currency manager, flexibility customizations, quality management, the list goes on. There are no tools missing. Let me clarify that. <laughs> there are about four or five really advanced kinds of things. Um, in, I could name a couple of them off the top of my head, um, including a customer or supplier portal. Um, that's a small extra charge. Financial consolidation using Synergy is a small additional charge. Um, and I think that's about, those are the the big hitters, the others are really, really obtuse. So you probably have heard someone say, well, we don't have that module, or we can't do that in the system unless we buy X, Y, and Z. So all these things are were available, but it was a costly add-on. Um, I'm beating that up pretty badly because every one of us have felt that pain along the way. So. So many businesses just opted to simply double enter information or use hard copies for document management, project management in Excel, CRM through who knows what, Salesforce, something not integrated, HR through their payroll system. And so none of this integration and access to information is, is possible because of all these disparate systems. It was a mess just to keep it all organized in all these different places. And so essentially, you can say bye-bye to one, one version of the truth because it's in multiple places. So I mentioned Click before, um, just a little bit more about this as we talk about functionality. Um, it's a reporting system that allows you to create your own ad hoc reports pull real-time data right from the system. It's actually cloud-based, but that doesn't matter. It's, it's immediate, it's real-time, and you can create these very visually appealing reports um, within a matter of minutes, not hours. Now, that, this kind of real-time reporting is already available with your workspace dashboards, but with Click, 
you won't need any special skills to create a new report. Anyone who is a, at, at the level of skill set of, a, of, a, of, an, of an accountant, for example, or someone who is a little bit tech savvy, and, and they'll get it, and they'll be able to create their own views, their own reports, get answers themselves using the click functionality. There we go. Wait a minute. Um, email integration. Let's talk about that for a second. Email, including multiple contacts, is native with Exact McCola 10. So, and the included event manager can automatically email important documents such as quotes, order acknowledgments, invoices, purchase orders, as well as send email notifications to employees of important activities as required. Can you imagine doing business without email today? I don't, you know, it, it was, having been in the business since 1992, I remember that. And it wasn't until 2000 when most companies really began using email. Now, I can't tell you the last time a customer has actually called our office with a support request. Everything is coming through email. I don't know really what we would do if we did not have email. So the email integration throughout the system is really tight and very, very critical and very visible. But you're probably wondering about training. So let's talk about some of these frequently asked questions. This sounds like a wonderful system, all these great things, but gosh, we're, we're using progression. We're using Macola ES. I know about six screens and that's it. What's it gonna take to find out all of this stuff that I need to run Exact Macola 10? Well, first of all, the good news is that it's still Macola ERP, still by Exact, just more intuitive. So those companies that are using progression will find the accounting applications are much easier to use and much more robust. All the old, all the old functions are there, and then some, but in a more user-friendly interface and, and with much improved reporting um, available. Um, it's gonna take a few hours to get familiar with the new stuff. So bottom line is, you may not be doing bank reconciliation within progression because bank book is frankly a, uh, not the greatest tool in the shed, um, but the integrated bank reconciliation in cash flow is a dream to use, very much like you know Quicken if you've ever used that. Those, now those using the core ERP functions such as order entry, purchasing, manufacturing, they'll need some training to familiarize themselves with the new interface. However, that, that, that part's not difficult and they will really embrace the new capabilities. So it's really just showing them, hey, where's my PO entry? Oh, it's right here? Okay, good, I'm, I'm off to the races. It's that simple for those folks on the core ERP side. Um, but as I mentioned, because the financial system is so much more powerful, if you're on progression, it'll take a couple of hours of, of training to get up to speed with all of that new capability. If you're on Macola ES, it's gonna be very, very similar so really, the, it, it's very much like the rest of the core ERP. While it evolved, there were quite a few end user presentations on the upgrade experience, um, and all of them spoke highly about the ease of use of Macola 10. So I wouldn't uh, be uh, terribly um, concerned about, the, about how to learn. Um, You'll be very, very pleasantly surprised as you, as you jump into it. Now, some of you might be using the WISIS system, either Agility or Agility Mobile or the wireless applications. So if you're using it with Progression or McCall ES, you'll be able to continue using it in the same manner. These applications work exactly the same, and all of your investment is preserved in automating those things that you've already done through WISIS. Um, we may um, improve the access to those functions and hang them on the workspace menus, but it will be the same screen, same function, same, same everything. So that's a really easy transition. So 
One question always comes up, well, we're going to be doing this great big upgrade. What about all of our history? Well, if you're currently using uh, Macola ES, since the database between ES and Exact Macola 10 is very similar, the history will be seamlessly preserved. Now, with progression, you have a choice. You can start clean with just master files um, in the Exact Macola 10 system, um, the progression system for history. That's one choice. You might want to make that choice if you're not confident in the data or there's so much obsolete data in it um, that you don't want to drag it around. Well, we can just do a master file conversion. You can have a moment to delete all of the inactive customers and suppliers and items and bombs and everything else, um, and then move forward and re-enter the transactions and um, you know, uh, go forward balances. That's an option. The other option is that the history can be preserved, and we do basically a full de database conversion in that case, but it costs a few more hours of consulting consulting time to convert all of the history and check it out and correct any errors that pop out from the days when you're still running on Btrieve progression, which, believe it or not, there are many companies who are on Macola 10 who started way back in the early 90s with Btrieve progression. Now, the fun stuff, the top 10 reasons why people upgrade. So. Um, now we're going to cover kind of some of the highlights. You know, why, why should I do this? And this is the real, where the rubber really meets the road. The first one is really about automation. The powerful event manager that comes standard with Macola 10 enables automation of manual and non-efficient processes. Saving time through automation is a really big deal with Macola 10. So that's one of the reasons we heard a lot of, especially at Evolve, is yeah, we've now automated this process, we're saving X amount of time, and so on. Better reporting. That was a big resounding number two, if you will. Information views, um, uh, like dashboards and such, the use of SQL Server reporting services, SSRS, um, the export to Excel of all of that kind of stuff, drill downs, um, being able to access more data right from a graph and more. I mean, the reporting is night and day different between the, the Macola 10 and progression or ES. Visibility. The real-time data presented by the dashboards is something that is actually going to take a little bit of getting used to. Um, we actually have begun using Macola 10 in our office, and it actually now is on my mind to look at those dashboards to be able to act on things that I should be watching. Before, we were all trained to kind of just print a report, act on it after the fact. The, the workspace with a real-time dashboard with the ability to act on something quickly is a game changer, but it's also a behavioral change that has to be made. The workspaces, you know, that's a, a much more natural user interface. If you were going to sit down at, or, or work in your garage in a project, the first thing you'd want to do is, is get all the tools ready so that you didn't have to pick up and put down the project every 10 minutes to go finding the right wrench or the right this or the right that. So a workspace is like being a master craftsman working at his workbench with all the tools needed to do his job comfortably within reach, without interruption, without any kind of distractions, where's this, where's that? So that's one of the real efficiency gains that happen with Macola 10, the use of workspaces. Mobility enhancement. As we've discussed before, mobile access is now a required capability for many businesses. I'm constantly on the road or out meeting with people and needing to set my own calendar. I'm, I'm accessing account information, looking for names, looking for phone numbers, um, trying to take a 
a, a look at any open tech support requests or anything that's going on in the business. I'm doing that from my smartphone. And that, my, my friends, are, is really helping me a lot. Um, it's also distracting me. I try not to do it when I'm driving, but <laughs> the re reality is you need to do it. And m progression of Macaulay, yes, just does not support mobility. Now, technology, even though we didn't get into the details, um, is an important reason. Um, first of all, deploying the latest Microsoft technologies provide those tools to allow you, the customers, to, to really personalize and customize the Macola 10 system to fit your company. So these are typically the tools that are in reach of an IT professional. I'm talking about SQL tools and SSRS and um, this new click um, anal analytical tool and other kinds of tools that you can actually hire people who would know that. Have you ever tried hiring a COBOL programmer today? They're very, very rare, and most of the time they're getting ready to retire. The browser access versus client server screens is, again, one of those top 10 reasons. First of all, it means less IT overhead. I can tell you that, you know, as a, um, Ativo is a, a cloud provider for um, Macola, all versions of Macola, and it's a lot more heavy lifting to host Macola progression and requires more servers and, and a lot more client server enablement than those customers that are on Macola 10. Many of them don't even need a desktop. They can just run from a browser. But the browser also means device independence. You know, no more fighting with the ARC department that, you know, really likes their Macintosh machines. It also means mobility. But mo most importantly, the, you know, a browser is just more intuitive by their nature. Uh, therefore, it requires less training and, and higher productivity. I mean, you see something that's kind of a, a different color blue, you know, you can click on it and go somewhere. It's, it's very, very intuitive. We're all trained to use a browser. The progression users, they loved the really improved accounting system with all the real-time reporting. And for both, you know, Macola ES and progression users, the fact that all the applications are available in one package saves thousands of dollars in the long run. Um, and Macola 10, if you, even if you were to buy it new, is much more competitively priced than when we had to invest in Macola ES and progression or the competing products. They were all much more expensive. The last reason I'll give you is that functionality is being added to Macola 10 that's just not available in progression uh, or Macola ES. And for example, quality management. Quality management is, is a native application now. Um, a service module is scheduled to be added in the next few months. Multi-site MRP. Um, I mentioned uh, IFERS compliance. Um, there's a enhanced financial consolidation tool being built into the financial reporting into the Excel add-in. Um, and investment and further development is taking place on Macola 10 only, as I mentioned. So with that, I'd like to um, conclude the, the PowerPoint section, the section of this and spend about five minutes and, and uh, give you a quick tour of some of the interface and, and how Macola 10 looks and feels if you haven't seen it before. So on this screen, what we're seeing is we're seeing a typical workspace. I've actually already logged in. This happens to be my home page. I have the controller role. As you can see there, because I have a lot of um, administrative authority within the system, I can actually bounce around to a number of different workspaces. But if you notice, 
This is where navigation is to do things that I might need to do, where I might need to view um, um, orders or a purchase order or something of that nature, right? Or do entries. And because, again, because I'm the controller, I have lots of stuff I can do. But notice this is the, the cash flow projections. Being the, being the controller, I need to know about cash flow. That's really important. I also have to keep my eyes on certain control accounts. As you can see, I've got $25.5 million in the bank, so, you know, I'm going to just take the afternoon off. I just love my mode Let's jump over to maybe this is the quality manager's uh, workspace. Here uh, we have some information about what's going on in the shop floor. We have some things I need to take a look at, some, some failed lab tests that I need to take a look at as to why those things happen. Um, I may need to jump in and um, create a nonconformance, and basically it's, it's taking me right to the creation of a nonconformance because of a purchase order receipt or something that failed on the shop floor. So everything that I need to do as a person in quality assurance is here on my workspace. Now, perhaps I'm a, a person that does accounts payable voucher entry. Now, here I've got a few other kinds of, of dashboard. We call these widgets. These are actual mini um, SQL Server reporting services reports, and they can be swapped in and out. Um, and the, the release that's coming out in this June um, actually makes that much easier to do. But notice that there's information here about accounts payable projections, um, a payables, snapshot, top five highest account balances. Um, looks like we don't pay our bills very well. Gee, no wonder why we have 25 million in the bank. We don't pay our bills. But if I go to the entries screen, notice that what I can do as an accounts payable voucher entry person is really less than what a controller can do. But maybe I'm new in my job, and I need to enter some vouchers. So as you can see to the right, there is a little I here, which means that I have what the workspace calls in-context documentation available. And here at Atibo, what we've done is we've created training guides associated with all of the major functions within the system. There are some things that are pretty straightforward that we didn't write training guides on. There'd be 3,000 of them. Um, but this will give, guide the person. You can open this up in another, um, another uh, maybe they forgot how to um, post an AP voucher or enter a cancellation voucher. So here's how we enter a cancellation voucher. Oh, okay, got it. Now I can go back and I can do the, do the process that I need to do. As you can see, this is the version of voucher entry that is still the client server screen. Many of those screens are, have both the, in fact, do I have them both? Yes, I do. This is what you saw was the client server version, and this is the the browser interface version. You enter the header information, click save, it takes you over to enter all the line items. Um, it, it really is quite uh, a lot easier to use. So you can see how the transition is being made. As that transition is happening, they're giving you both. So that if you're comfortable with the old one, great, you want to use that. Or if you would prefer to use the web browser one, and then when at some point, they'll probably eliminate the client-server interface, and you probably wouldn't install it anyway, um, but that's going to be an option for you during the transition. So you can actually continue to use um, the screens in the same way from workspaces, just like you did before. So that's how some of the navigation works, but you can also see that, you know, this is that the universal I've heard people call this a hamburger. That's mm -hmm. the, the, the nickname for this controller, this control. It'll take you to maybe you have a home page um, or to the workflow or to your calendar or um, have you look up on a people or your, your favorites. 
Um, here is a search capability. I can search for items and you know, bring up an item card right away and, and drill into the details of whatever it is that I, I'm trying to find out. <coughs> or you have, you know, comprehensive search capability where if you click search, oh, I already had 220 in there, that's why I just kind of, now I can, I can have much more search criteria than this, but now I can search for whatever item I'm looking for. And out to the right is where you might be able to create a new account. You might need to do that if you were an account table to create a new account. Or maybe you need to create a, a request for vacation time off um, or, you know, all of the kinds of things that you might be able to do within the, within the system depending on your security profile, your role. So everything is kind of here, kind of all in one screen. And these can all be separate browsers. You can keep them open and tile them on another monitor, however you want to operate. Um, it just is so much easier to, to navigate and work through the system. So with that, I'd like to flip back to our presentation. And one second. And at this point, um, I think we can open it up to any questions. Um, Do we have any questions uh, that came in over the chat feature? Uh, we have had a couple of questions come in <clears throat> over chat. And, um, and Mike Sandoval, I, I see that you have your hand raised. Um, let's get, we'll get to the chat questions, and then we'll be sure to get to you right away. Um, the first question that came in uh, was, how, how can you cost justify an upgrade or help them build a business case for upgrading to EM10? Well, that's a great question. One of the things that we heard at Evolve was that if you're going to undertake this kind of a, um, an upgrade to your system, you really need to assess how you're currently doing business and where you can make process improvements. In other words, get a business process assessment done because that's where you're going to find the opportunities for cost savings or revenue enhancement or improvements in compliance because that has dollars and cents associated with it, because there is a cost associated with an upgrade. The licensing is not free. Um, the price on the licensing varies. Um, depends on what you are actually using right now. There's three different groups uh, for pricing purposes, uh, the most expensive being those that are only using progression and nothing else. Um, or ES, Macola ES, and nothing else. Progression Macola ES or nothing else. That's group one. Group two is if you have um, Macola ES or progression and synergy, so you already have the synergy application um, working with one of those two applications. Or the least expensive group is the ones that have synergy, but they enhanced it to already include the configurable workspaces that used to be called Navigator. So depending on where, where you fall in one of those groups determines the price per user for upgrade. So we can gladly help you with a, with a, a price quote on that. It's pretty straightforward. Kathy, um, Kathy Marchner, I hope I'm pronouncing that last name correct, is wondering, uh, does McCullough 10 still use Crystal Reporting? The answer is yes. So Crystal Reports is still the, the engine behind most of the forms. So we can actually preserve your customized forms um, if, um, or if you have any kind of custom reports, Crystal will still work with all of those. We just redirect it to the EM10 database instead of the ES or the, or the Progressive database. 
Um, it is being replaced as the native report reporting tool within Macola over a period of time with SQL Server reporting services. That's really not exact decision. That's uh, the entire industry is is doing that. Uh, David Lowe is wondering: Is the quality management um, connected to receiving process uh, or flexibility? Um, the quality management function. There's actually uh, two that we need to speak of. One is the is the native quality management function within Macola 10 that comes up right out of the box. That functionality is directed at all of the incoming receiving, um, and basically you create specifications for tests, perform tests, disposition them, and so forth. It's relatively limited. Um, I'm told that it is going to be enhanced in the, in the future by exact. Um, in the meantime, though, um, for those of you who might be interested, Ativo has written a significant extension to quality management, all based on synergy. And we've done this for our client base, um, two different groups of people, uh, both food processing, um, so it's kind of food processing specific, and metals management. Uh, so anyone in any way, shape, or form dealing with metals fabrication or metallurgy of any kind, um, it's working extremely well for them. Um, so either way, we've got you covered. All right, Mike Sandoval, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you real quick. So I, you had your hand raised. <clears throat> if you have a question, go ahead. Yeah, real quick. First off, Len, let me thank you very much for putting this uh, overview together. As we hear Peninsula start to transition over into Macola 10, it gave me a real good overview and uh, basically a good comparison base that I can go back to the different functional uh, leaders out there in our company and let them know what they've got, uh, what, what's coming for them. And, and to that point, again, as we are making this transition, I'm curious if you have or if there exists a knowledge base of what I'll call points of friction with companies who are transitioning from prior Macola versions into Macola 10. You know, for example, uh, was there more friction from the folks in shipping because it was a little different or more different or there were a, a number of um, processes that were just unexpected changes? You know, I'll, I'll need to see where there might be a knowledge base like that. Um, I can speak to one that has been a real, um, a real problem for our early conversions. And it was those clients who, who did not want to move to the workspaces they wanted to stay on the old Macola ES interface. And the reason why that's a point of friction is because the Macola 10 technology eliminates the need for AS import. AS import was the synchronization tool between the Macola ES database and the, and the Synergy database, you know, customers, and, and between customers and customers and items and items and so forth. Well, if you only use the Macola ES integration, we had to keep running AS import. Rather than using the Macola 10 account entry, item entry function, which basically handles it seamlessly. So AS import has its, has its limitations, has its problems, things get stuck, uh, there's a time delay, there's all kinds of issues. That has become a point of friction. So if I had any recommendation, um, I would highly recommend that you prepare users for using the workspace interface right from day one, and we actually remove the ES interface just for those synchronization reasons. So that's definitely a point of friction. But uh, like I said, I mean, the interface itself is so much more intuitive. If we, the project leaders, do our job right and set up the workspaces to be specific to our company's roles. Because remember, purchasing manager to purchasing manager, they've got, they, they, they kind of wear, uh, you know, different kinds of hats from one company to the next. 
But if we do our job in setting them up properly, um, they're going to be thrilled. So. Okay, great. Uh, we have two more chat questions, and then um, we'll go ahead and open up the phone lines for everyone if they have questions. Uh, the first one is regarding, um, I'm going to get to Mike and get to yours, and then David will get to you. Um, Mike was asking about third-party applications. Let's say they have um, the eBiz credit card uh, module or the Wysis Agility. Um, what's the migration look like if they are going to go from a progression or ES to EM10? Is there a reinstall that needs to happen? How does the data migrate over? Is the process super complicated? Sure. Um, well, the, 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 the answer is, uh, as usual, it depends. If we are moving to a brand new, a brand new server, then yes, we do have some reinstallation and, and so on. Um, but if we're going to be on the same server, um, chances are it's going to be minimal. The eBiz uh, integration works the same exact way. Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, WISIS, those users who are using WISIS, especially Agility, Agility Mobile, if they use scanners, unless you told them that you went to a call 10, they would, they would have a clue because their job is going to be exactly the same. And those agility screens are also exactly the same. So, you know, in the, in the, at the final um, hour when we cut over to Macola 10, we're going to redirect um, both WISIS and eBiz to the new database because we will create a new database rather than um, upgrade in place. Um, then that would be essentially the moment that it, it gets, that we have to do a little bit of work as it relates to eBiz and WISIS. And uh, David Lowe, um, he was wondering, is there any connected, excuse me, is there any connectivity between item master and CAD applications uh, or document management applications? I'm not aware of one that comes out of the box, but this is an important question. The, the technology that has been deployed with Macola 10 leaves us with a very open architecture. Getting data in and out of the, old, the older versions was possible, but it took a lot of heavy breathing and, all, all, and it was expensive. Now we have essentially APIs that will allow us to access those kinds of functions like feeding data to a CAD system or from a CAD system back to creating an item. Um, so that's very much more enabled now. Um, so that's the good news. All right, that's the chat questions, everyone. We're going to go ahead and open up the phone lines. I just ask that if you don't have a question, please self-mute your phone so you don't get uh, inundated with um, Price is Right reruns or whatever else you're doing in the background. Um, we'll go ahead and unmute the phones now. And uh, lines should be open. So if we have any additional questions, now it's the time to ask. All right. So I guess um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We're um, um, very thankful for your time today. And as always, this, this presentation will be posted to our website for uh, availability if you want to review it or have someone else in your organization take a look. Thank you all and have a wonderful day.